Hello! I'm so glad you could join me. I miss you guys and I hope you are finding ways to learn and play and take care of one another and stay safe while we're all at home waiting for whatever comes next. Did you have a nice Easter? I was so glad to see some of my friends on the Zoom call last week. I was really excited to see the things that you wanted to share and show and tell. And if I missed you and you would like a chance to do show and tell with Mr. Ethan or myself, just let me know because we would love to schedule a video chat with you sometime. Um, it's good to see my friends. It's good for my heart and it's good for my soul. So um, at our house on Easter, after we had our video call, we watched the special worship service with Bishop Bard. And it was so neat to see our church building being used, even though it wasn't the people that we were mostly used to seeing um, in our church building. So we worshiped together and I loved singing the Easter hymns. That was so good for me. Um, and then we had pancakes for lunch. I really hope you found a way to make Easter special at your house too. Uh, we've heard a lot of the Easter story. I taught you uh, an Easter story during Sunday school the last time you joined me. And then uh, there was an Easter story in last week's service. And then this Sunday, if you listen to this Sunday's church service, we talked some more about the women who went to the tomb um, and, and about that empty tomb Easter story. But what happens next? We know that Jesus has been resurrected and has met the women on the road and told them to go tell the other disciples the good news and to meet them in Galilee. Uh, so then what? Well, here's one story that we have in the Bible that happens after the resurrection of Jesus. And do you know what he does? Just like before Easter, when he was getting ready for um, the hard things that were ahead of him, he gathered his friends around him. And so this is what he does after his resurrection too. He's done the hard thing and now he wants to find his community and his friends again. Um, and so now we're going to hear a story about Jesus encountering some of his disciples. So. I hope you brought your Bible. If you didn't bring your Bible, you can pause the video, go grab it. Or if you just want to listen to me read this week, that's okay too. This one is kind of a long Bible story. Um, so we have a lot of words to read. And if you would rather listen, that's fine. Or if you want to go get your Bible, pause the video now and go grab it and come on back. So there are four Gospels in the Bible. They are all in the New Testament, and those are the books that tell us the stories of Jesus' life. The story we're reading this week comes out of the Gospel of Luke. So it goes Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So if we open our Bible in half and in half again, we'll be in the New Testament, which is towards the back, and it goes Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. If you find something that looks like Acts, you've gone a little bit too far, you need to move forward. So we are going to Luke chapter 24. Remember chapter are the big numbers. And we're going to verse 13 through 35. Um, if you're reading out of your deep blue Bible, like I'm reading out of a deep blue Bible this week, you are going to be looking for the story that says encounter on the Emmaus Road. Um, your other Bible might have a title like that too. If you're reading from a different translation or a different print of Bible, it might have something that says the road to Emmaus or encountering Jesus on the way to Emmaus or something along those lines. So Luke 24 verse 13, let's read. On that same day, two disciples were traveling to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking to each other about everything that had happened. While they were discussing these things, Jesus himself arrived and joined them on their journey. They were prevented from recognizing him. He said to them, what are you talking about as you walk along? They stopped their faces downcast, the one named Cleopas replied, 
Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who is unaware of the things that have taken place over the last few days? Like, hey man, where you been? How do you not know? Jesus said to them, what things? They said to him, the things about Jesus of Nazareth. Because of his powerful deeds and words, he was recognized by God and all the people as a prophet. But our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. We had hoped he was the one who would redeem Israel. All these things happened three days ago. But there's more. Some women from our group have left us stunned. They went to the tomb early this morning and didn't find his body. They came to us saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who had told, him, told them he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women said. They didn't see him. Then Jesus said to them, You foolish people, your dull minds keep you from believing all that the prophets talked about. Wasn't it necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then he interpreted for them the things written about himself in all the scriptures, starting with Moses and going through all the prophets. When they came to Emmaus, he acted as if he was going on ahead, but they urged him saying, stay with us. It's nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. After he took his seat at the table with them, he took the bread, blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he disappeared from sight. They said to each other, weren't our hearts on fire when he spoke to us along the road and when he explained the scriptures for us? Then they got up right then and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying to each other, the Lord really has risen. He appeared to Simon. Then the two disciples described what had happened along the road and how Jesus was made known to them as he broke the bread kind of a big story, isn't it? So two men, two disciples, followers of Jesus, were on their way to a town not far from Jerusalem. I mean, seven miles is a long walk, but it's not days and days of walking. And they encountered somebody on the road, and it was Jesus, but they couldn't, for some reason, recognize that it was Jesus. And then they started telling Jesus his own story. And Jesus said, well, isn't this what the prophets said would happen? And Jesus explained the scriptures and the prophecies to them, and they felt a holy fire inside their souls. And then when they got to the home and invited Jesus in, and Jesus blessed and broke the bread, suddenly they recognized him. So why do you think that they didn't recognize Jesus to begin with? The Bible doesn't really explain that to us. When they did finally recognize him, it's because Jesus took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. What does that remind you of? Hmm. So this is such an important part of the story that it's actually our memory verse for the month. It's very easy and I know you guys can get it committed to your memory and to your hearts by the end of this month. It goes like this. Jesus was made known to them as he broke the bread. Luke 24, verse 35b. Now, when you see an A or a B next to a scripture, it means that it's part of a sentence. Sometimes the sentence goes on and it doesn't make a lot of sense when you take it as a memory verse. So Luke 24, 35b means that it's part of the sentence, not the whole verse. Um, so one more time, Jesus was made known to them as they broke the bread. Luke 24, verse 35b. So are you ready for our first activity this week? We're going to play a game. You're going to need a piece of paper and something to write with. If you're not a writer yet, you can ask a grown up or a big brother or sister to help you write things down. Um, Brothers and sisters can play together, or you guys can play versus each other. 
It's up to you, but I will tell you that two heads are better than one for this game if you're gonna try and beat me. So you might wanna work together. So go ahead and pause the video, go get a piece of paper and something to write with, and I'll wait here. Are you ready? Do you have what you need? Great. So I've placed a number of items on my table. I'm going to uncover the items for just a few moments and I want you to count how many coins are on the table. There are different kinds of coins. I've got pennies and dimes and nickels and quarters. Um, so count all the coins. Understood? All right. All right, are you ready? Here we go. Okay, did you count all the coins? Great, now I want you to take that piece of paper and that writing utensil, and I want you to list every item that was on my table. Go ahead and pause the video, make a whole list of everything you can remember, no cheating and backing up the video, just what you can remember. It's no fun if you cheat and then come on back when you're done with your list. All right, are you ready? I'm going to reveal to you everything that was on my table. So first let's do coins. How many coins did you count? I had three quarters. I had two dimes. I had four pennies and I had six nickels, but did you notice that one of them got hidden when I first moved the cloth? Um, some of the other things moved a little bit when I moved the cloth, and so I could only actually see five nickels after I took the cloth off, but there were six on there, so you had to be really, really sneaky to catch that one. So in total, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 coins. But if you only counted 14, I'm gonna count that as a win for you. But what else was on the table? Let's take a look. <clears throat> there was a Pokemon card and an Easter egg. There was some paints. I bet a bunch of you remembered that because I was kind of big and colorful. Um, my bracelet, my What Would Jesus Do bracelet from my student winter retreat with my big kid friends. Uh, there was this blue glass pebble. There was a blue marker, my little orange snake buddy that I borrowed from Felix, a big pink S, a little clothespin, a pile of pom-poms, and these were the culprits for covering up that sneaky nickel. There was a playing card. Ooh, there we go, a playing card, the king of hearts, if you were super sneaky and caught that. And a Hot Wheels car, little blue guy. A big purple straw. And if you were super sneaky and very observant, I had five pony beads, a pink, blue, yellow, orange, and green pony beads all in that one scene. How did you do? Count up how many you got right. I would be very impressed if 
I myself remembered maybe more than four or five things. We like to play this game a lot at the dinner table where we will take one thing away and try to remember it and it feels a lot like this. So, did any of you remember everything that was on the tray? Did any of you forget to list the coins that I asked you to count? If I had told you before I showed you my table, you might have remembered more of the items, but since I told you to count the coins, they're what you were looking for. It's often the case that we find the things that we're looking for and overlook things that we aren't. In the Bible story we heard today, do you think the two disciples were expecting to see Jesus on the road? The, Je the disciples had seen Jesus die just a few days ago, and they heard the news that the tomb was empty, but they hadn't yet really understood what that meant, that Jesus was alive. That may be why they didn't recognize Jesus. Have you ever met someone that you're used to seeing in one place, in a different place, like maybe your teacher at the grocery store or a friend from school at summer camp. It can take your brain a minute to kind of figure out who they are when they're not where you expect to see them. Let's play one more time, just for fun. I've changed the things on my table, so let's see how well you do this time knowing the rules. No writing anything down, and no pausing the picture, okay? Okay, round two, different items. You're gonna still count coins, but remember this time you're gonna count coins and see how many items you can remember. On your mark, get set, go. All right, now pause the video and make your list and come on back and then we will see how you did this time around. Okay, are you ready to see what was, what was on my table this time? I still had coins, but I took away those nickels. So I had nine coins, three quarters, two dimes, and four pennies. Did you get nine coins this time? And then I had three rocks. A big pirate telescope, um, a paintbrush. Did you get the paintbrush? And a puzzle piece. I also had this little Christmas tree Pez dispenser and a robot, a fancy spoon. Three Lego bricks, a strip of stickers, and this little cow giraffe. We can't decide in our family if it's a cow or a giraffe. It's a little animal. How'd you do this time? Did you do better knowing the rules? So, Are you ready for our next activity? This project is going to take some creativity, some clothing, maybe borrowed from somebody else in your house, or maybe something out of your dress up box, um, and probably some accessories. And you're gonna need a grown up to help you take a picture. So let me tell you about our project before you pause the video to run and go get supplies. Our Bible story today is about something that happened after Jesus' resurrection. 
Jesus appeared to the two disciples um, as they were walking along the road and they didn't recognize Jesus at first. Maybe he looked physically different. Maybe he was wearing different clothing or maybe like our memory game, they weren't expecting to see Jesus. The Bible doesn't really tell us why the disciples didn't recognize Jesus until he broke the bread. How would you disguise yourself if you didn't want anyone to know who you were? I think I would want to wear some big sunglasses to kind of cover my face. And then maybe, um, oh, I don't know, a, a scarf. And... Um, I still kind of look like me. And then like maybe a big hat. Um, if I wanted to disguise my body, I might wear some really baggy clothes or something like a, a winter coat or something that changes the way my body looks. And I might do something to change the way I walk or the way my voice sounds if I really wanted to be sneaky and trick someone. So, <clears throat> I want you, I'm going to take the hat off because I can't take myself seriously looking at the camera right now. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to try your best to disguise yourself so that we have no idea who you are, okay? And then ask a grown-up to take a picture and email it to me at my church email. On Wednesday night, I always have a Zoom phone call, so a video chat with Mr. Ethan. We talk about work things and what we need to take care of for the week upcoming. When I'm in that Zoom chat with him, I'm gonna press record, and then I'm gonna show him all the pictures you guys send and see if Mr. Ethan can guess who's in each disguise. So once I've recorded it, I'll put it in the Facebook parents page and then you and your parents can watch on Thursday or Friday or Saturday and see if you were sneaky enough to trick him. Um, so here's what you need. You need to go find your best disguise. My kitties have the zoomies right now because it's late at night. Um, so I need you to go find your best disguise. Go find some dress up. Go find some borrowed clothes, something that really transforms the way you look and have a grown-up help take your picture and email it to me. And we'll see if we can disguise who you are like Jesus was disguised on the road to Emmaus. Sound good? Pause the video, go put on your disguises, take your pictures, and then come on back and we'll pray and, and start our week off on a, on a good note. Did you have fun making your disguises? I can't wait to see them. They're going to be so fun and funny. I know how creative you all are. I'm really excited for this. So today we heard the story of Jesus appearing to two disciples as they were walking to the road, walking the road to Emmaus, but they had no idea who he was. Do you remember what the disciples said when Jesus asked them what they were talking about? They told Jesus the story of Jesus. It's kind of strange, isn't it? The disciples recognized Jesus only when he broke the bread. Jesus broke bread when he shared the Passover meal before his crucifixion. And he told the disciples at that time to remember him when they broke bread again. Another time Jesus broke bread when he was feeding a crowd and had just a few fish and a few loaves of bread, he blessed it and broke it and then gave it to the crowd and everyone was fed. The disciples had seen Jesus pray and break bread over and over again. It was kind of his signature move. It was so, so familiar that that was the moment that the disciples knew that Jesus was in the midst with them. We don't really break bread much anymore. A lot of our bread comes sliced. A lot of our bread gets sliced with a knife if we make it at home. But 
we can still remember Jesus every time we eat a meal and share food with our family. We can remember that act of breaking bread and eating together and that God provides for us and that Jesus loves us and invites us to be a part of God's kingdom. So let's pray together. Remember that when we pray, we are asking God to help us and saying thank you to God for the good things in our life. So hold in your heart and in your head the things that you want to ask for help for and for the things that you want to thank God for. And there are so many good things yet to say thanks for. Let's pray. God, thank you for your son, Jesus. Help us to remember the things that Jesus taught us so we can live as you would want us to. Amen. Thanks again for joining me. I hope that you are finding Sunday School interesting and fun. It's so tricky with this camera and I can't wait to see you back at church, but it's good that we can do it this way anyway. Have a great week, friends.